Welcome back to the AH Speed Figures channel. Uh, Sam Turner here with you and joined, of course, by Andy Holding, the inimitable face of Andy Holding. And uh, we're going to have a continue our look back. And this is day three of our look back at the 2020 festival, um, the ramifications of what was achieved last year and also how we felt uh, we arrived at some selections going into last year. You know, the figures that they'd done previous to the Cheltenham Festival. We're going to start off we do a couple of races um, on day three. We're going to do the Marsh Novices Chase and also the Ryanair Chase. So they both threw up very stylish performances, as you would imagine. Sam Crow and Mellon fighting out the Marsh Chase. Uh, Min and St Calvados, pretty much a similar finish in the Ryanair Chase. We'll start with the Marsh, Andy, Sam Crow. Um, this race has been really informative for this year, though, as well, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I mean, we, we talked about the, the previous two days with the golden figure being Seventy, um, what we award for for um, a speed figure with a lot of the novices um, that suggests that they've run to a, a fair level or a championship level, close to championship level prior to Cheltenham. And when you look at and you downloaded our figures for last year with the Marsh, uh, we've got so many horses congested into that sort of top bracket. Mm. We got Fahim seventy two, we got Itchy Feet seventy two, we got Mister Fisher seventy two, we got Midnight Shadow, and and. Even if, um, Sam Crow wasn't top, he, he'd, he'd run to the 69. So there was only like two or three spots between them. So it was suggesting that this race is very difficult. It was going to mm. be a, a close finish. And that's damn what we what, it, what we ended up getting. We got to, a nose between Sam Crow and Mellon. Fahim was just um, slightly behind in third. And, and the Apple mentioned uh, Mr. Fisher was fourth. Um, it could have gone either way, couldn't it, depending on the stakes and how the race panned out. Uh, it basically, qu they quickened up, didn't they, from three out. And if you mm. compare the sort of sectional times from that uh, Mars chase of last year to Min's uh, victory in the Ryanair, th there was a, there was about a three second difference, right, rough, roughly about fifteen lengths. So they were really trapping on. So um, b both the the, the Mars chase and the Ryanair chase, deep in quality, both had a significant bearing on that on on the day. And of course, uh, uh, as, as time has suggested, going forward. Mm. Um, you, you look at the you look at the the, the first race, the Marsh. Samco hasn't quite hit the, the heady heights as he, as he did last year, but he's that kind of horse. Mm. But Mellon uh, has gone on to finish an admirable um, runner-up here, of course, in the in the Savills Chase. Just got nutted. Midnight Shadow, who was well beaten on the day, he just got mm. uh, beat by um, uh, Chatham Street Lad. But we've seen Mr. Fisher bounce back. Uh, Annie Mack won a, won a good um, good contest the other day. And, and Tornado, Tornado Flies finished second in a grade one behind me. And so, albeit there's a little bit of a patchiness to, to, to the, the March chase, and it's not as solid as some of the other races we've mentioned, mm -hmm. it still worked out pretty damn well. Um, so, you knew with those novices having run pound for pound as equally as well as the Ryanair chase did um, an hour later, that that race was roughly um, or likely to work out as well as uh, one or two we've mentioned. Yeah, and the interesting way that you, you analyze that that race as well is that the speed figure was a 73 which was which was very genuine very honest not spectacular considering min clocked an 80 which we would regard as top class over fences but it was the circuit time wasn't it that that really alerted you to that being a strong piece of form now these two different ways of rating races go hand in hand really for our, our subscribers don't they and, and it, it just shows you that if you get a very very healthy overall time but a really good sectional time they can also be ones to concentrate on those obviously flagged up on our on our sheets as a true you know they're a true race they're they're under um what anything else on the card has managed to achieve and he was sort of minus 3.7 seconds on the circuit compared to everything else so that you know it was a really good performance from the front too wasn't it yeah and it's probably more it probably tells you more about those sources than anything else we know that they they can run a fast overall, but they all also got a lot of speed as well. Mm. And that's what's basically been borne out this season. None of them have, have tried three miles. The ones that have have probably failed. But, you know, like Mellon, I won't say mm -hmm. fact, it wasn't a massive failure, but it's telling us anyway that he's a two and a half mile horse. He can quicken, he can go with a championship level, but he can also show a turn of foot as well. Yeah. He doesn't look a stayer. Uh, and, and that's basically what's basically, uh, what's what's panned out with that Marsh chase. Uh, it's not... And you look at the right now as well, Sam. I mean, that's worked out incredibly well, hasn't it? You know, me and mm. one of John Durkin. Uh, St. Calvados has finished second in a yes. King George. A Plutard's won the Savills and Frodon's won the King George. So, I yeah. mean, both races for overall purposes, overall speed figure purposes, sectional time purposes, the two on the same card, 
incredible how, how um, each race has thrown up so many winners uh, subsequently or so many uh, good performances subsequently. Yeah, and, and like you obviously look back at the figures as, as we do and the, the horses that get the 80s and the 81s of this world, the Empire Islands, the Champs, those sort of races, um, and also, as you say, Min and the Ryanair. It's incredible how those races have, moved, have, have worked out moving forward, even in a, a really complicated and difficult year for trainers and, and, and for the industry. They've still managed to throw up a, a good weight of success in top class races. So it just shows that the historical data that we produce um, is almost as, as almost as useful, really, going forward, you know, with your analysis um, as, as the, the current sheets that we produce as well and finding your winners, because if you're onto these races as being good quality races and very strong form guides at an early stage that can shape your decisions moving forward so you know that's where the you know the race finder um service that we offer as well on the subscriber page is so good that you can go in and have a look at a horse's profile can't you and you can build up a picture of what they're capable of that's it sam yeah i mean like i say time and time again these good horses will come back and do it they don't do it all the time it doesn't mean to say they've had a dip in form if they run to a a 65, then what's happened there? There's always a reason. That's probably just because he's running a slowly run race. It doesn't mean to say that that's their their level of achievement per se. That we know, having all the historic data, as you said, and looking back at all these races, um, they've got a whole history of, of uh, performances in and around the 80 mark, which suggests that you know they are championship performers when they need to turn it on. Just a quick line then on that Ryanair chase. I mean, this year's Ryanair chase looks like being almost warmer than the Gold Cup. Is that right in saying? There's more strength in depth, really, in a Ryanair chase with, with Min, Imperial Aura, horse that you were sweet on at last year's festival, of course. Alaho, who's thrown his cap in the ring over his, probably his correct trip. St. Calvados, Melon, a Plutard will probably go Gold Cup. But, you know, you've still got one or two sort of dangerous floaters as well, the likes of Mr. Fisher and Waiting Patiently, that really do, it, it looks a stellar field, doesn't it, this year? Well, it's going to bring together these two races we've just, um, mm. discussed you know you're going to get the you know the the Mr Fishers the Melons representing that race and, and we're, they're, they're going to clash head on with the with the older brigade if you like the more um, tried and trusted crew um, a lot depends on what the conditions are on the day I think it was similar to what we had last year and it was soft it certainly throws some Calvados in, into the mix mm. I thought he should have won last year's Ryanair by the way because I think if he would have challenged away from the, the inside fence um, Gavin Sheer mm-hmm. decided to um, explore a route that perhaps in hindsight wasn't wasn't was an ideal. Uh, it could do with the Harry Whittingham horses being a bit better for. I think he struggled mm. for winners this season, Harry, but I'm sure come the spring now they'll kick back into gear again. Uh, and he'd be a very interesting contender if they go down that route. I think he was down to running the Cotswold Chase, and that was a fact finding yes. mission to see whether it was a Gold Cup horse or not. The evidence was that perhaps the King King Georgie might not necessarily be a three mile two horse round Cheltenham, um, but uh, only time will tell. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Great analysis of day three, then of the 2020 festival. And uh, we'll be kicking on with day four very shortly.